Hey guys, my name is Kian, and today we're excited to sit down and talk with Simon Heaventime Jean and Tim Timkiro Cho from the NALCS Team Echo Fox. Thanks for, thanks for coming by and having a chat with us. To start things off, why don't you guys tell us about yourself? Sure, uh, my name is Simon, my in-game name is Heaventime, and I'm a head coach for Team Echo Fox. So I'm Tim, uh, my in-game name is Tim Kiro, I'm the assistant coach for Team Echo Fox, and both of us are around here in the Vancouver local area. We're in Vancouver too, so it's really nice to have you guys yeah. um, being able to, to come sit down with us. Thank you. Um, how did you guys get approached for your respective position and what kind of esports experience have you had that led up to your current position on Echo Fox? Actually, I was a pro player for like uh, three years. Yeah. I've been uh, playing Challenger Series okay. a couple of times and I was also coaching the UBC team and that actually kind of led up to Jake's interest, uh, who is our general manager. Uh, I had a conversation with him and he was interested in me to trade out so I went to LA at mm -hmm. the end of summer split and we were just I mean, I was just there, you know, like uh, trying to do my best and it went well and also we needed an assistant coach so I immediately hit up Tim who is our assistant coach right now and he said he was interested and yeah, that's what happened. Okay, how long were you in LA for at that time? Uh, I was in total including the promotion department, we were there for a month, oh, more than a month, right? Like uh, You were there late June, I got yeah. there on the 1st of July. Okay, so you were there for a while. Ooh, cool. Can you describe your roles, um, both your roles on Echo Fox as a coach and an assistant coach, and how coaching goes beyond just having gameplay knowledge? Mm, uh, as a head coach, I make sure everyone can be on the same page, and if there is a discussion, I try to go over. And he's also there to just like add up stuff, and he's. You want to explain your answer? Yeah. So. Uh, for me, or for Simon particularly, he focuses a lot more on the strategy aspect of the game. So, really, in game coaching, he does a lot of the strategic stuff. So, what I do is I do, I try to manage our analysts. I try to also do a lot of research myself and just make sure everyone's on point and doing their job. That's kind of what I try to do. Okay. And usually, um, when when the teams have kind of uh, their little little get together during the game, is it? Do you have the team captain kind of ramp up the team, or are you guys the guy that are trying to get everyone? Mm -hmm. Depends. You know, feeling, never feeling good. got to the point because like uh, players and coaches we actually uh, respect like uh, mutually. Okay. So we never got to the point where we are like we hate you, you hate me, like that kind of stuff. But okay. If I have to pick a captain on our team, definitely our middle in from it. Okay. Yeah. And regards to your question, so uh, for hyping people up, mostly most of the time we actually try to keep them pretty calm. Like what we want to do is like we always try to make sure that they just play as they scrim, mm -hmm. like play how they we scrim and just not get emotional over the game or get personal about the game. So we try to keep that. Uh, for practice, we don't really do a hype of things. We just encourage them to be focused. That's very good. Okay, and it seems like the coaches are almost a staple for the teams wanting to be competitive. Um, what would you say are the qualities that are needed to be a successful coach? And are there any tips that you can give to people that want to be a coach? Mm, definitely, I think it is important to be professional about it. That even though uh, we are close to them at a friend level, mm -hmm. still I tried to be professional. And that was something like a pre, which is he actually helped me about that stuff. So I think that's the most important part. Uh, not trying to approach in emotional way, just trying to be professional and calm. Okay. I wouldn't necessarily describe us as successful coaches, but I do think that elements of a successful coach include um, just making sure your team is able to do things comfortably and just execute on stage. I think that's where we kind of did do so well, this split. Yeah, there's also next time, so yeah. there's definitely a lot, of, um, a lot of things to look forward to, right? Okay, and um, I want to talk a little bit about Rick Fox. Uh, how does Rick Fox involve himself with the team beyond being a co-owner? And uh, we can see him. We can see him watching matches, and he speaks very passionately about esports. So we're just wondering: um, does he does he have an active role providing uh, support and guidance as a as a co-owner? I think he did before I joined the team, and he was just there trying to give his advice. He's from his experience because he was a com uh, competitive uh, player as well in NBA. Yeah. So sometimes his advice is uh, really helpful to just like uh, remind us what's important mm -hmm. in this competitive setting. Okay. Yeah, he drops a lot of hints for us. Uh, he's probably kind of just like a, like a mentor to a lot of players and to us, uh, uh, us as well. So 
doesn't really get too nitty gritty with us. He gives us space to do what we want to do, and on game days, he just shows us when he shows support for us. Nice, nice. Okay. And how would you describe the team environment and the players on the team? So I thought team environment would be really bad because when I joined the team, it was like one victory and fourteen losses. Oh. But despite despite the losing track, the team environment was actually good. Everyone was friendly with each other. It just like uh, there were a lot of you know, kill. Yeah. For for the record we had, I think the environment was pretty good. Yeah. People were pretty like at the so uh, yeah. At the end, uh, we just kind of just told them like just perform during promotional tournament. And we're good. And then we all just kind of relaxed a bit. Yeah. Do you feel like, um, I guess, the team chemistry is getting better now? Yeah, definitely. And do you guys do a lot of uh, team bonding things? Maybe like go go karting or play some sports? I'll just go to the gym. Yeah, <laughs> actually, all good. Oh, okay, I'm watching movies together. Like weightlifting? Yeah. yeah. Oh, nice. That's that's awesome. That's really that's uh, definitely a really good uh, team bonding thing. I guess um, people get get together and then yeah. they can they can talk about their yeah, a lot of uh, lives. After. A lot of feedback goes back and forth. We all talk to each other informally. Then. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's good to hear. And uh, what are your thoughts on Immortals allegedly denying uh, the TSM scrim practice um, lately in order for C9 to have the higher chance of winning? Mm, it's hard to say when. Like, I'm not sure when they denied the practice, though. If I was Immortal, I don't think I would do the same thing, but I don't blame Immortal for doing that. It's not like they're doing something illegal, right? I mean, it's. Uh, it's right for TSM to be upset, but I don't think it's just like a immortal. I mean, I don't think I don't think everyone should just like play immortal because they did their best to have like a higher chance to go to work, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Probably looking out for their best interest. Yep. And um, from your time on Echo Fox, what would you consider to be the greatest challenge, and how did you guys overcome? Uh, how did you guys overcome this? Like uh, everyone, not everyone. Like uh, I think I know. I think uh, um, as a, <clears throat> as we we're doing pretty bad, and then promotional tournament was coming up. Um, I think our greatest challenge was just like performing on stage uh, yeah. during promotional tournament, and okay. how we overcame was just like we just sat everyone down and just said we just need to win this, and then we prepared for the next two weeks. We just focused the guys up, and then everyone stepped it up when we can it. What What do you guys? Um, what are your procedures and kind of getting the guys all focused and in the zone, ready to play when uh, you guys have a tournament coming up? We didn't really have to like. Uh, they get. They do it. They were like motivated. They're already. motivated themselves. Yeah. They always motivated. They were willing to work hard on this, and they actually did. And we, I think, we showed up against Energy Game. Okay, that's very good. During that match against Energy, uh, what kind of mindset did your team have going into the match, and um, how did you prepare? How did you prepare to fight for the spot in the LCS? So I guess, actually I, I want to start with P1, like uh, people okay. were like, talking kind of badly about P1, but we always knew that P1 is a kind of team that improving like compared to the start of split. So I wasn't sure if we would like a bit P1, I wasn't unsure, but I guess energy, we were like sure that we would like 3-0 or 3-1 against energy because they showed up uh, during the scrim, they played pretty bad, and we always beat them in scrim, and we were confident in ourselves that we could beat energy, for sure. Nice, nice. Our players are pretty confident, actually. Yeah. Like, they actually go into games thinking that we're probably going to win. Yeah. Like, Frog, Frogs especially, he thinks that we're always going to win. Yeah, like, he always thinks, like, we just do our thing and we're going to win. Yeah. That's the, pos that's the right yeah. attitude, the positive mindset that will definitely take them a long way. So, um, if you could describe each team members um, with one word, what would it be? Careful, troll, Tony, passive, progressive, progressive, kiss, motivated, nice. carry, alone. <laughs> What'd you say? Alone, like a... Why, why do you say alone? I don't want to say alone. Okay, not alone, but he... he how, to, how to describe it, Terry? I, I wouldn't say alone. Well, my, the way I would describe it is underrated. I think oh, yeah, sure. Definitely underrated. Well, if I had to do one word for him, underrated. Uh, Keith, motivated too, would be the second one. Froggen. Really smart. Smart. Yeah, top tier. Uh, that's two words, but top tier. Uh, Tony, quiet. And KFO. Troll. Don't be troll. He's simple. 
simple. Simple. Yeah. Simple. Good, good choice of the word. Yeah. What are your thoughts on the state of the LCS format? Is having promotion relegation sustainable in developing a healthy and professional esports scene in league? There has been criticism that the barrier of entry and cyclical nature makes it difficult for upcoming teams to compete with the LCS teams. Okay, so for this one, <clears throat> uh, promotion relegation is okay as long as like if you get relegated, there's a stable scene to like support you. But right now, it's just like the risk is just too high. Like if you get relegated, you're like teams are selling for at least like 1.5 mil about right now, mm -hmm. and then if you go to challenger, your uh, the spots are worth about 200k. Oh, so just right. like. No, 200k. Like, uh, I think the Ember spot was bought up by 200k wow. for that amount. So, like, that's public news. So it's just like the values aren't like your business just takes a huge hit if you go and get relegated. Really so that's really unhealthy. And then, um, sorry, what else was the other question? LCS format. LCS format, like the best of yeah. best of three. Uh, I think it's okay. Before <laughs> coming before coming in this split, I thought it was great. I thought the best of three is, does reward the better team, but. Uh, for us, in particular, I think the best of two would have been a lot better. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> but, uh, I think the format's fine. Yeah. The, time, the timing, uh, the times, uh, scheduling is kind of messed up because of them. Oh. Just because, like in EU LCS, like you know, it's one game, one game, and then you know you're gonna play. For us, we're just sitting backstage, and then like you can go on and on. But was, I remember one day we were, we got there at six. We ended up playing at like 9.30 or 10. Oh wow. He yeah. came straight from the airport. Yeah, that was my first day. He had his like luggage there, <laughs> baggage. And he came here at 6 and we were there until 1 a.m. He was like, is it always like this? <laughs> I was like, why, why are we here so long? So, yeah, it kind of sucks for that, but overall yeah. I think it's okay. Uh, mm -hmm. I think the world's qualification format is really good too. Mm -hmm. uh, the way you do the circuit points as well as the, the gauntlet style, I think it's really good. Yep. Nice, nice. Okay, on the topic of LCS, um, are you excited for the NA Scouting Ground program? Um, I think this is the, the first time that Riot is trying to give exposure to undiscovered talent, so do you think it, this is a step up in the right direction, or will, you be, or will we be seeing uh, this as a reoccurring event? I think the intention is good, but yeah. definitely there's a better way to take care of it, because like, what, what's happening is like, so they don't give chance to the players who already showed up in NECS, right? Mm -hmm. But I think it's unfair because uh, from my experience, some of good players, even though they are good, they are underrated and it's hard for them to show up now because like, what can they do? The right said they will they will show up, but the thing is it's a team game. Like you don't always like, show up by yourself even though you're a good player. Mm -hmm. So I think that's something Riot right should take care of, not only give chance to the players who didn't play at all. I disagree though. I think it's a good idea. I don't think the purpose of any scouting grounds, I don't think is to find LCS players. I think it's to find challenger certain players. I don't think like you can just magically yeah. pluck someone out of challenge, uh, just a ladder and then put them in an LCS team and they'll yeah, succeed. Like, like it's very hard to do. I don't think there has been any case of that recently. I don't think like, right now no one cares about any challenger. So if, if they actually like uh, promote any challenger scene more and make it bigger, I definitely mm -hmm. agree. But at the same time, like the NA challengers, like that's yeah. you, you put a player there, and that's how they develop themselves. Like uh, Biofrost, for example, like he didn't come straight from ladder; he went on Dream Team and some other teams, and then he mm -hmm. worked his way up. I don't think there's any player in uh, on the in the LCS that actually just came straight from ladder, except except for Zentinel. I think he's the exception. Yeah. But he was just like a P1 sub. Oh, uh, okay. Maybe oh, Brandini okay. as well, but I think Brandini was on some other teams as well. I'm pretty sure he was. So, okay, that's my thoughts. And overall, we're pretty excited for it just to take a peek and see how they do things. Mm -hmm. It's definitely a step in the right direction, I think. Yep. Nice. Sure. You guys will probably keep your eyes on it and yeah, see sure. how things go. I think, uh, I'm not sure, I have to talk to our org. I think we're heavily involved too. Like, I think, and I I think it's going to be Riot flying us if we are not in LA, right? No, like, uh, I remember one of the orgs, they, they came to our office one time and they asked us about this months ago. So okay. we, we knew about it and then they, I think they wanted us to be one of the orgs to yeah. take a look. I'm not too sure about that yet. Because the thing is, I, when I uh, read the article, it was, they actually mentioned Echo Fox. Yeah, they had mentioned so. Echo Fox and Team Liquid, so I think they want us to look, take a closer look, I'm not too sure. Yeah, that's definitely. I know a lot of the other LCS teams are probably taking a look. That's a exciting. lot of teams probably want to make L uh, challenger teams. I know TSM already announced that they wanted to look for players in October, so this is probably their first way of getting like first step. Yeah. Okay, look forward to that. What are your thoughts uh, for Worlds this year? SKD. I think it'll be pretty good. I think 
the right teams are going for each region. It looks pretty competitive so far. Um, Europe, you have Forgiven finally going to the Worlds. Uh, NA, we got TSM, CLG. It'll be interesting who we send for our third There team. were a lot of like uh, hits on CLG that it should be like an uh, immortal. No way. No, they were something. I mean, there is hate, yeah, but, like, but there's no way. They, they should, CLG should go. Like, yeah, they're winning so. by they, the deserve it. they won the spring split. Like, mm -hmm. uh, the world is about the team who performed better in a year, not just for a split. Yeah. And also, I think it's a Riot kind of like messing up the patches like a lot. Oh, yeah, so, yeah. Oh, yeah the matches. The... They just like change it right before like, That's pretty messed up. World. I'm like, oh, I'm not sure about that. <laughs> that can Red definitely change. China are going. Although well, I'm surprised I may win. I thought World Elite would go as the third seed. And then for Korea, we have Rocks and SKT. And one more, I'm not sure who's the third one yet. Overall, pretty excited. Looks pretty good. Yeah. Oh, so We're awesome. probably going to fly down and watch a few of the matches live. So nice. I'm excited for that as well. How, how is it like watching, uh, watching it live? As, um... I guess as coaches, you guys are not only watching, watching the game. I'm sure there's other things that you guys are are keeping your eyes on when you guys are attending these event live. Actually, it's uh, when when we watch depends depends. Yeah, because like we don't watch to enjoy the match. We actually watch to prepare for like the next game. Yeah. Oh, okay. We watch the first game. We hear the players' communication. We talk. We point at the problem. We write it down, we go over shortly because we only have five minutes. Mm. So we have to be really focused. Yeah. Only game three we kinda of watch and enjoy. But yeah. for the most part, like for our matches in particular, we're backstage, we can all we can hear the comms. So mm. the, what we do is like we just take notes and things and as soon as the game's done, we have five minutes to start the next one. We don't really talk about anything unless it adds to our next game. That's the thing. Yeah. And then for other matches, like if we watch them live, they're they're pretty good to watch and then uh, depends if we're watching to scout the other team mm -hmm. or we're just watching just to see like how they play. For example, uh, TSM is a really good team just to watch to see how they their decision making is really okay. good to watch. Definitely a lot of focus is I like a lot of focus when you yeah. guys are watching yeah. watching the games, eh? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you had a, a difficult split this summer. So what will your team do during the off season to prepare for the next split? And what can your fans hope to see with Echo Fox in the future? Definitely. We're, gonna be we're making changes. Uh, yeah, it's hard to say. Like the players are going to work really hard. Uh, we can't really say now. Okay. Yeah. Players are working hard, and we're going to do a boot camp soon. Stuff like that. What's the boot camp? Can you uh, talk uh, a little bit more about that? Scrum of all teams. Okay. So we're going to be all in LA. We'll see. It's not. It's not fully confirmed yet. But we're maybe still we might do boot camp in Korea, but it's not confirmed. Where it's I'm not even sure. So. I don't think so. Yeah. But yeah. Would would uh would it be a, a kind of like a topic to have a boot camp in Vancouver or something? No, no. that will not. It will never happen. It doesn't just. There's no teams to play. <laughs> oh, okay. And then you need well, the facility, yeah. and the ping is actually even higher here. Oh yeah. Because when you scrum, we play on the tournament realm, and that server is in LA. Yeah. So oh, okay. And Korea is okay because the ping is like nine or something, Eight. and then it yeah. actually makes a huge difference. The sixty yeah. to nine ping is incredibly. Yeah. Yeah, makes an incredible difference. Yeah. Okay. Okay. All right, that was interesting. Let's start wrapping this up. Do you guys have any shoutouts or plugs for any anyone you'd like to make? Yeah, shout out to our sponsors, uh, HyperX, Verdict Gear, and Save Focus, and Tasty Way, uh, and to the team, and for you guys for having us here. Awesome, awesome. So, if uh, for all the fans, where where can they find you if they'd like to keep up with you guys uh, personally or the team F Echo Fox? Just follow our Twitter. Yeah, have a time. Just mine's just Tim Kira. Yeah. Awesome. Well, if you guys like this video, remember to give us a thumbs up and make sure you guys leave a comment. Other than that, subscribe to Action News Thanks for watching.